What's up guys, Justin here from TheSketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp layout tutorial for you. So in this video, I'm going to talk about how to add a title block to your layout documents and also how to save it as a template so you can use it again in future projects. Um, so if you're looking for more layout information, make sure to check out the SketchUpEssentials.com slash layout. So I've linked uh, different groups of tutorials there as well as some books that are really good for uh, learning more about layout. So uh, if you're interested in learning more about creating plans in SketchUp using layout, make sure to check out the SketchUpEssentials.com slash layout. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so creating the actual title block itself isn't really that big of a deal. You basically just come in and you kind of draw it in using um, the built-in tools. So it's a lot like drawing in SketchUp. So um, first of all, when you first start off, you're going to want to set your page size. So you're going to want to pick whatever page size you want. So there's a whole bunch of different options over here in... Uh, in the getting started page and there's also options for the graph paper and also the plain paper so in this case I'm going to go ahead and select the graph paper I don't think it matters because I think you can turn all of that off anyway so in this case we'll just go with this a3 landscape and uh, just remember if you're creating a template file and you work in a certain page size make sure you select the page size that you usually use so if you use 11 by 17 then make sure you pick that if you use like a big 30 by 40 two or something like that make sure you pick that and if you pick the wrong one you can go up to file document setup and you can adjust the size of this if you want to so you can click this drop down however if you make any changes then um, if you make any changes then it's gonna th or if you draw on here and then you change it around it's gonna throw off the way this looks in here so just try to pick the page size that you want so in this case what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here with the line tool and I'm going to start off and I'm just going to draw a line down and I'm just going to kind of rough out my space. And again like this is not that big of a deal when you come in here and you draw this. So um, like you're just basically adding shapes in here in order to uh, fill this in. So you're going to add text items and everything else. Um, the things that are going to be more important are going to be things like the way that you add the text in here. So the auto text. And so that's what I want to do next is I want to introduce you to the concept of auto text. And so auto text is text that layout automatically fills in for you based on information that's set up in your model. So it's almost like the text version of a component from SketchUp but it's a little bit different. But you can see what auto text information is in your in your layout document by going up to file document setup and then going to auto text and what that's going to have in here is that's going to have a series of pieces of information about or a series of pieces of information that you can set here that then you can just automatically reference within your drawings and so in this case what i'm going to do is let's go ahead and let's add our address to our drawings and so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to close out of this and I'm going to add a text box. And so there's a couple different ways you could do this. So if you wanted to, you could just come in here and you could just and you could just type your address. So so you could come in here and you could type your address on every single page. But the problem with that is it's not easy to make changes, it's not easy to manage, and now you've got multiple different pieces of information that you have on various pages. And you, you'd really rather reference back for anything that's going to be a... It's, it's really just better to reference back and maybe project name or something like that is a better example but we'll go ahead and use this so you could come in here and just enter this as general information on every single page in your title block what I would recommend instead is you can actually link back to the auto text and so the way you can tell something is auto text in layout is it has these brackets around it so if I was to type in address with brackets Right now, all this would show is the word address. And the reason for that is because inside your document setup, the value for address is just set to address. But let's say that we were to come in here and I was to type in my address. You can see how this is linking back to that auto text value because it's inside the brackets. And so you can use that to actually um, put smart pieces of information in here in your model.
So, and in this case, probably what we would do is we would just turn this sideways and you'll notice you can just come in here and you can rotate and resize your text boxes and that sort of thing just by clicking on them and then using the little arrows or this little point right here will help you rotate this. So I'm going to rotate this and put this off to the side and then I'm going to add in another one of these. I'm going to go ahead and resize this guy a little bit. And I'll just do a copy, paste, so I did a control C and then a control V. And then I'm just gonna use the shift key and the arrow keys to move this out. And that's one thing to notice when you're working with this, if you just use the arrow keys, this moves this around a little bit. If you hold the shift key, it makes the, it makes the amount of ground that this covers a lot faster. So if you wanna move things around quickly, hold shift and tap the arrow keys. If you want some more fine control, just use the arrow keys. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I'll just type in the SketchUp. Essentials in here. So that's gonna be my company name. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go into my text styles over here in my tray. And I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna select a different kind of text. So I'll just make it this Source Sans Pro. You can pick whatever you want. And then I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna adjust the size. So in this case, I'm gonna make this like a 20. And then I can move this over here and we can just kind of center this wherever we want it. And then we can put our address underneath that. And then you could adjust the text size for your address as well. So make it a little bit bigger, a little easier to read that sort of thing. So, and we'll just kind of manually center this. I was hoping this would give me an inference point to the center of this, um, to this text right here, but it didn't look like it was gonna do that. And so now let's go ahead and let's add an, you know what, let's add a page number in the lower right hand corner. So the way that we're gonna add a page number is we're just gonna come up and we're gonna add another text box. And we're just going to click and drag until we've set the size of our text box. And so in this case, whoops, we'll just do that again. We're going to use another auto text value. So in this case, we're going to use the auto text value for page number. And we're gonna click off of this. And you can see how this gives me a value of one. And so real quick, I'm gonna change this so that it's centered in this box by using just the center, align center, and then also the anchor center. So this will align it up and down in the middle as well. So you can see how this number's in the lower right hand corner. And let's go ahead and let's make it we'll make it a 22 point font for right now. So you can see how this is filling in the page number because I typed in the value for page number. And you can see if you go up to your document setup, the page number shows up as one of your auto text values. So, and you can also, if you want, have this show your page name. So the page that you have over here in your, um, in your pages list. So if you didn't want to do page number, what you could do instead is you could do page name in the brackets in the same way. And so now if I was to adjust this and say we called this um, A0.01 or 1.01 floor plan, then you can see how this adjusts. And if I was to create a second page, then this would adjust for whatever the second page number is. And we'll talk about that in a little, a little bit later. So in this case, you can do that either way if you want to. So if you want your page name to show up in here, you can do that. You can also mix these tags. So let's say for example, that I wanted to manually name these, I could do page number. But then before this, I could type in a value of A. And then afterwards, I could type in a value of 0.01. And so you can see how this is adding your page number in here, but then your other values are fixed over here. So you can kind of do this however you want to do this. You can either do this by auto numbering or you can do this by your page number. It's kind of a preference thing. And then the other thing I wanna talk about real quick is let's make this black with white text. So what we'll do is we'll scroll up and we wanna to go to the shape style section. And we're gonna click the button for fill and then we're also going to change our fill to black. So you can see and now my fill is black and I can't see my text. We're also gonna go back down to my text section. We'll change this color for your text 
to white. So you can see how now you've got a dark background and white text. And all I did was adjusted the settings in there for that. And so now that we have this kind of page number section set, we can resize this and we can use this to uh, go ahead and draw out the other half of this. So I'm just gonna draw this up and across here. And you'll notice when I did that, this is filling that in right now. It's creating kind of a shape and it's filling it in. We're just gonna go to the shape style section. We're gonna unclick the button for fill because we don't want this to fill this in. And one thing to notice is you can't edit the individual lines as long as this is like this. But what you can do is you could, because these are all kind of connected and layout kind of makes these an individual object. But what you can do is you can double click in here and then you can edit each individual object by itself. And so the other thing you're gonna notice is right now, if I click in here and I was delete, to delete out this line, this kind of throws everything off because it's made this kind of like a polyline in here. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go up to the split option and I'm gonna go down and click on this point. And what that'll do is that'll split this line off from this other object. So now I can come in here and I can delete it out. So we've got our page number in here. Let's go ahead and let's add a logo in the upper right hand corner. And so you're just gonna do this in the same way that you would insert plans. You're just gonna go to file, insert. You're gonna find your logo. And then you're just gonna resize this. And notice just like anything else, if you hold the shift key, that'll lock your aspect ratio in here. So you can use that to resize this without uh, distorting your image. So, and you may have to play around with this a little bit to really get the uh, result that you want. So now you've got your logo in here. And so what you would do is you would basically just come in here and fill everything else out. And the other thing you would do is you would use things like the line tool in order to create separations. So in this case, that line, when I drew that line, the stroke was off. Well, if the stroke is off, that means it's not actually gonna show the line. So just make sure when you draw a line that the, show, the stroke is on. And you can also adjust the thickness of that line. So if I zoom in here and look at this line, I can adjust how thick it is by clicking the little drop down next to stroke. So you can make some lines thicker than others if you want to. You can type in a value if you want to be more precise there. So basically what you would do is you would come in here and you would just add all of the elements that you want as a part of your title block. So in this case, I might draw a line along the bottom to give myself kind of a starting point. So this is all kind of a personal style situation. So you can really make this kind of look the way that you want it to look. So I may come in here and make a few more changes a little bit later, but for right now, let's say that we were done. Let's say that we've added a little box down here for project description, and you just do the same thing where you draw a text box and you fill all that other information in. But let's say that we'd filled all of this information in. Well now, the question is, how do you get this to show up on every page? Because this is something that you want to repeat across your whole across your whole set of documents. So first of all, I'm gonna change this back to cover page. So now I want this to repeat on every page. And so in order to do that, what you're gonna do is you're gonna put all this information on a layer. And so to do that, I would start off by clicking and dragging across all of this and right clicking and just making it a group. That way it's just a little bit easier to work with. And then you're gonna come in and you're gonna create a layer and you're gonna call it title block. So, and you can drag that down to the bottom generally. That doesn't need to be at the top, but with your title block, what you're going to do now is you're going to come in here, you're going to select your group and right click, and you're going to do a move to layer title block. And so let's go ahead and add a second page. So you can see if I click between the different pages right now, my title block isn't showing up on every page. So what we would do to get that to show up on every page, is there's a little button over here for control whether layer is shared across all pages. So in this case, you would just click that. And then now you can see how your title block is on every page. And you can see how this, this name or number is adjusting based on whatever page number that you're on. So now you've got a title block that's gonna show up across however many pages you create. So you can see how page three, page four, all of those are gonna show up in here. 
that's how you can kind of create a title block that shows up across the different pages. And you may want to click on this little lock button to lock this. That means you can't come in here and accidentally edit it or select it or anything like that. It's kind of locked to the page. And if you ever need to edit it, you can unlock it and come in here and do that. But I would recommend locking that. And then the other thing that you can do is let's say you have a page where you don't want your title block to show up. Like a lot of the time your cover page looks different than the rest of your pages. Well, what you would do is you can come in here and on that page, you can just hide that layer. So now my title block shows up on page two, three, four, but not on my cover page. So you can turn that off on whatever pages you don't want it. So now we need to fix our numbering. And so if you'll notice right now, there's a little number over here indicating what the starting page for the auto text numbering is. This means that your numbering starts on page one and it continues to page two, three, four. Well, the problem is page two in the pages list is actually page one for your numbering because you want your first page in here to be an A1 or an A0, not an A2. And so what we need to do is we need to adjust what the starting page is. So we'll just go up to file, document setup, and then in your auto text, you're gonna go down and you're gonna look at your page number. So you're gonna click on the auto text value for page number. And you can see how this allows you to set how your numbering looks as well as what it starts at and what the starting page is. In this case, we want to click the drop down for start page and we want to set the start page as page two. And we'll go ahead and close out of this. And I'm going to go ahead and adjust these. I'd probably rename these to what they would actually be anyway. But in this case, now you can see the little number sign move down. And now this page is your starting page. So this page shows A1. This one shows A2, this one shows A3, and so on. And every time you add a new page, that numbering is going to continue. You can see how you're thrown a little off um, on your actual page names over here. So you may have to manually rename those, but you can see how this title block is adjusting across every page. And the other thing to note is any changes that you make in this block, like let's say that I was to come in here and I was to make this more of a like full rectangle instead of a line. Well, you can see how I've changed that on page one, but if I click to page two, page three, page four, that's changed on every page. So your, so your title block is a lot like a component in that sense. And so now you've got your page numbering right, you've got your information in here. You'd probably still come in and add some other information. The last thing I wanna talk about is saving this as a template. And I'm gonna delete out these extra pages right now because I don't really need them. Um, you could create different page templates for different kinds of things. But in this case, I'm just gonna show you how to save this as a template and you'll notice that this is showing up on every page because I didn't put that item on that layer for title block so you need to make sure that you're managing your layers when you do this but now I've got a t cover page that's blank and I've got a first page for my plans well what I want to do is I'm gonna go up to file save as template and what that's gonna allow me to do is save this as a page template that I can select later. And I'll probably put this in the folder for my templates and I'll just call this the SketchUp Essentials A3. So I'll put the page size in here and I'll click OK. And so what I just did is I saved that as a template that now I can reference when I start a new file. So if you go to File, New, and you go down to My Templates, you can see how that template you just selected is gonna show up in there. So you could use that as your starting point for any documents that you create later. So once you get all your title blocks and everything else set up in the way that you want them, it's just a question of selecting those when you start your new projects. So that's where I'm gonna end today's video. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Have you been using this? Uh, do you create plans in layout? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. Um, if you're looking for more information about layout, make sure to check out the sketchupessentials.com slash layout. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around, here remember to click that subscribe button for new sketchup content every week if you like what i'm doing in this channel please consider supporting me on patreon every little bit helps even if it's only a dollar a month so make sure you check out that link in the notes down below but in any case thank you so much for taking the time to watch this i really appreciate it and i will catch you in the next video thanks guys